Greetings, my name is Ryan Nitsch. I'm a Principal Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services. Joining me today is Thatcher from Red Hat. Thatcher, say hi. Hi, I'm Thatcher Hubbard. I'm with the Managed OpenShift Black Belt team at Red Hat. Thatcher, uh, I've been working quite a bit with OpenShift customers on AWS, more specifically managed OpenShift. So if you look at something like the Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS Rosa, and many of my customers are managing their application workloads, their container-based solutions through a CI-CD um, process, uh, pipelines, automated delivery. There is a growing trend to do operational configurations, so cluster configurations, configurations of add-ons, tracking state through a similar process. What is what is Red Hat bringing to customers to help in that sort of space? Okay, well, um, it starts with the GitOps operator, the Red Hat GitOps operator, um, which is an add-on of itself. Um, and this is a, I want to note, it is an operator, which means it instantiates other uh, instances of the, the workload to actually manage various, uh, typically tied to a namespace. But um, yeah, so we start with the GitOps operator. Um, and that, well, let's let's start with kind of your original use case um, about the GitOps operator, which is... Well, before you get there, okay. uh, under, under the hood of this operator, the upstream magic of this with some secret source added to it is, is Argo. It is Argo. Okay. It is very much Argo. But, um, but this is not cut yourself managing your own Argo. <laughs> this is right. a, a packaged up... It's, s it's, it, it, it's Argo with the integration work done by Red Hat and supported by Red Hat. Uh, so, yes. Um, thank you for calling that out. Um, so, let's talk about your first use case, which is... Applications. Yeah, application right. development. And I think this is the bit that, that a lot of people are already familiar with. Right, and that's I, something similar. But I do want to, I just want to kind of set the stage and make sure folks get an opportunity to know precisely what it is we're talking about. So we've got a Git repo over here. I'm okay at drawing that icon. Um, and we've got a developer, or most likely a lot of developers. Um, and they push code to this repo, push it to branches, they PR it into a specific branch. Um, and when that happens, Argo is going to be monitoring this and, and responding to that. So whenever there's a change in the repo, right. and I'm assuming Argo would connect to OpenShift's API endpoint and, and push those configurations. Right. Argo watches the repo. Uh, it pulls it, actually. Uh, watches the repo. And when a change happens, you know, that repo just holds um, OpenShift manifest. It's all, you know, it's all for manipulating OpenShift resources via the API. It will just apply it. And so, you know, if we have like a little deployment over here with a few pods in it, if something changed in the deployment resource in that repo, Argo would go ahead, talk to the API and redeploy it just like you would maybe would manually, it's, then you don't have to do it. Um, it's an automated process that's managed by Argo. So yeah, that's kind of our original use case. Um, but yes, moving on to your Second use case, which is managing the cluster configuration itself. Um, and there's a lot of things that you, I guess I would say, go under day two operations, things that are very important, services that serve your developers on the cluster, logging being kind of first and foremost. Um, thank you, Ryan. Yeah, um, logging is a very important one. There's a variety of things that come directly from Red Hat. Uh, the CSI, the oh, secrets CSI, operator, yeah. uh, is a very important one. Um, um, if you're talking CSIs, there, there's a very broad collection of, of operators who the operator have third-party solutions, right. like monitoring, logging, security. Um, right. Uh, you know, external external DNS being you know one sort of example of something that's commonly deployed on an OpenShift cluster to ease in management. So this could be pretty much anything that uh, you're able to script, any 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 configuration change that you're doing on the cluster or the, the add-ons onto the clusters. I'm going to add add-ons. Yeah. <laughs> over there. Uh, so if, if you could script that, you could then manage that configuration through... Anything you can manipulate via the API. Because again, what's held in these Git repos, and I'm going to draw another one in here just to represent this. This would be your cluster state. It's your source of truth for what's configured on the cluster at any time. Um, and the same thing happens. You'd have an Argo here. Um, these would both be instantiated and managed by the operator. Um, Argo would 
pull that repo, and if there was a change to one of the resources inside of it, say the configuration of the logging and monitoring um, stack, it would go ahead and arbitrate that, um, and it would get updated. So if you were adding or changing something, it's as simple as... So two things are standing out for me over here. Okay. The, the, the first is this is not upstream Argo that, that Red Hat has taken this and, and given customers a fully supported uh, and added a bit of secret source to it. Yeah. The, the second thing is, for me personally, it's that that perspective of desired state, that I, I have a single source of truth, this is what my configurations are. But where this becomes more exciting to me is none of the customers I'm working with have one open shift cluster. They have, <laughs> they have non-production, they've got production, they are hybrid, so they have on-premises, they're on the cloud, and they may in many cases be hybrid cloud users where they're using more than one more cloud than provider. One cloud. So how do we take this and, and blanket apply it to say a, a fleet of open shift implementations that may include self-managed open shift as well as managed, managed open shift products? Um, well, Red Hat Advanced Cluster Manager uh, is the answer to that question, or the, the best answer to that question, in my opinion. Um, and Advanced Cluster Manager essentially extends the functionality that we're talking about here at a cluster level, um, where you can manage, um, you know, you can manage the the services that run on it, not necessarily the individual apps. That's up to you too, if you want to do that. You may have a reason to keep that different based on what's on the cluster. But for cluster-wide operators and configuration. When a cluster gets added to Advanced Cluster Manager, you can have it set up so Advanced Cluster Manager will, will instruct the cluster to install the GitOps operator and then use the same repo, uh, because this does support a certain level of templating, the same repo to do that sort of day two configuration. So if you have a consistent logging and monitoring, um, you know, say you're, you're forwarding logs to CloudWatch. You're on AWS, you're forwarding logs to CloudWatch. Well, your cluster may be in different regions, and so that's something that you'd want to change, have templated, but you do consistently want a naming scheme for the logs that get pushed to CloudWatch. That configuration would be in your repo. You would template it. When a cluster was added or Red Hat ACM, it would automatically get that configuration. Uh -huh. There's another thing I want to call out here. If you have a, a, a net new cluster, so you've just gone through a provisioning process, mm -hmm. Uh, you can configure advanced cluster manager to actually install and configure the, the GitOps operator and then push configuration down. But you can also take a cluster with an existing GitOps operator and join register it, it <laughs> and, and then the Rackham environment actually becomes authoritative over it. Right, it's, it is fleet management. That is the intent behind ACM, is that it is fleet management. And that's a really key part. We talk about policy management. Uh, policies like anything else on Red Hat or, or on OCP are, you know, it's YAML that the API understands. So, so I get, I get all of the benefits that developers have had with managing their application fleets for my administrative or operational side of, of managing OpenShift across a fleet, irrespective of which flavor of OpenShift, which flavor <laughs> as well as where it exists.